Okay, hi. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over just the, the basics, the fundamentals of linked lists, okay? Um, in particular, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about arrays versus uh, um, organizing a list as a linked list. Um, and then we'll look at the nodes and node type. Um, a lot about today is going to be kind of a review of pointers and dynamic memory, okay? So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you weren't, uh, if you didn't get these, the, these concepts down uh, when we talked about this back in um, um, the, the second or third week, um, so you'll, you may need to go back and review these things because we'll be, you need to know those really well here for working with linked lists, okay? And then we'll look at some examples here uh, of creating lists and stuff like that. Um, so before I get into the kind of code examples, let, let me say a little bit about um, um, array-based versus a linked list-based um, or dynamically allocated nodes. Okay, So we already saw an example of, of array-based, uh, again, back in week three, I think, when we talked about dynamic memory uh, and, may, and some of your assignments as well. Um, we created uh, a data type called a list type, uh, but it was based uh, on an array, okay, underneath. Um, and, um, 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 you know, you can, you can go back and look at that code. So, I mean, you know, uh, so you, th that's fine. I mean, you can use an array to, to keep a list of items. It has some advantages and some, some disadvantages over the linked list that we'll look at here. I mean, the advantages are that it's, it's, it's fast um, and, and you have random access to the item. So, so to get in to, to like an access an item in the middle um, is just as fast as to access the item at the front or the back of the uh, list, right? Uh, another thing is you can actually sort these items and use like a binary search. Um, so so uh, you can do a search real fast on, on an array-based list, and that's not really true for a linked list here I'm talking about. But the disadvantage of, of using an array, if you remember back to that, if, if you wanted to like, if you, if you, the, the, the way that you normally lose, use a list in a high-level language is it's, it's really a dynamic kind of a, a thing of a data structure. So I can add, I'm, I'm constantly going to be adding and removing items, uh, maybe on the front and the back, but maybe in the middle. So you need to be able to insert and delete stuff. So for an array-based implementation, um, I mean, you know, you, you can always allocate your array that's bigger than your initial list size, but at some point if you're inserting a lot of stuff, whether in the middle or on the ends of your list, um, you're gonna, you know, your array will get full, and at that point, you can't insert anything more. So either, you know, your your list, um, you know, you're done, or else you have to build stuff into your um, abstract data type, your list type, that's array based, to handle when it's full to grow the size. Okay, and we did that, so that's what we did uh, when we talked about dynamic memory allocation. Whenever we inserted items and the list was the the array was full. We increased, we, we allocated a new bit of memory, but I mean, that was very inefficient. I mean, first of all, you'd have to allocate some new memory, but then you have to copy all the items from the old block of memory into the new block of memory, okay? So, so I mean, that's very time consuming. And, and also, you have a problem with insertion. So, if you want to keep your uh, list in order, like sorted order or something like that, so you can search fast, that's fine. But if you need to insert items into the list, if you need to insert an item in the middle or the beginning, um, I mean, you have to shift all the items. So once you find the place where you want to insert the item into the array, you're going to have to shift everything up by one so you, you can make room to insert that. So that's, that's pretty time consuming as well. So that's the reason why linked lists that use dynamically allocated memory or dynamically allocated nodes um, are used for, for uh, building uh, data types and, and, and different kinds of abstract data types. Um, so, I mean, uh, they, they have some disadvantages, okay? So, um, uh, like, you can order them, but you can't search them, you know, using a binary search, even if you have them in order, because of the way that a, a linked list works, okay? But later on in this course, we'll be looking at trees, binary trees. So that solves the, the problem of being able to search um, in logarithmic time uh, for a dynamically allocated uh, structure of nodes here. Um, there is some uh, space overhead. So with, with an array-based implementation, you have almost no extra space. You just need the space for the actual items in your list. But for a linked list, as we'll see, you have space overhead. You have to have these, these links, um, uh, which are basically pointers, um, in the C pointers. 
um, in, in order to construct the, 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 the nodes in your linked list. So, so there's a little bit of extra space overhead. But, but there's some really big advantages with, with having uh, this linked list um, um, structure. So basically all the disadvantages I talked about are solved by, by using linked lists. Insertion and deletion and growing and, sh and shrinking are, are easy, and they're all basically the same, um, uh, the, take about the same amount of time for a linked list, as opposed to like an array where if you have to insert an item, you have to maybe shift items, or if you need to uh, insert an item and your array, is already, your array is already full, you might have to grow it, okay? So, um, so yeah, keep those in mind. I mean, those are big kind of, um, 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 uh, kind of, uh, you know, comparing the two here, right? So, I mean, sometimes, you know, these, these things are more important, so you want to use an array-based implementation, but sometimes insertion and growing, you need to do that a lot, and so it's more important that you can do that efficiently. So in that case, you'd want to use a linked list-based uh, implementation. All right, so let's... Um, Let's, so as usual, I have um, uh, so Coda's examples. I'll post this with the video. So we're going to start off in, in, in this lecture video. I'm only going to be showing kind of the basics. I'll have another video where I'm going to talk about list, uh, linked lists or lists in general as abstract data types. Okay, but in this one, um, we're going to be looking at um, um, uh, constructing a, a, a linked list by hand and 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 or inserting and deleting. Uh, items into a linked list by hand. Okay, so so the first thing, the way these work um, when you're dynamically alloc allocating memory to construct a linked list. Um, so the the first thing is you need like a structure or a class um, that 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 we usually call a node for our linked list. So so they usually look pretty simple. I mean, it's as simple as this. So uh, this is directly from our book, except for I called it capital N node type instead of little n node type. But, but yeah, you just need two pieces of information. You need the actual information that's in your list, so your item, your list item. And then you need these pointers. Um, and notice, um, I think I may have shown this before, but, but you know, the, the first time you run across this, this is kind of recursive or self-referential. So we've got a pointer to a node type inside of the definition of our node type structure. But this is perfectly legal... Um, a perfectly legal uh, C code that you can do in C++ code. So this just means because it's a pointer to a node type, it's not an actual node type itself. So anything that's a pointer to something, that, that's really just a memory address. So, so C and C++ know how to, um, to uh, take a declaration like this, okay? So yeah, I mean, but, but this is just going to be linked to uh, another one of these node types, and, and we'll see how to use this here uh, in a second. Uh, and another note before I move on from this, um, I mean, uh, just having lists of integers, uh, you know, I mean, often you need lists of other things. I might need a list of strings or a list of complex numbers or something like that. So, you know, um, uh, in a real implementation, um, and I'll probably have this in the next video, you'd want to templatize this. You, you want to have a template here so that I, I could have nodes of whatever type, you know, nodes, uh, nodes, nodes of strings or, or nodes that are holding uh, doubles, floating point values, or something else, like a user-defined class, right? Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, the more usual way to do this, we, we, we would have a, a template for our node type, and we would link up nodes of whatever uh, type that our template uh, structure holds there, all right? Um, so let's go back to main here. So uh, this week, there's, there's pretty much, I got one function here, but pretty much everything is kind of down in the main here. So um, so now that we have that, that node type structure. Um, so here's what I was talking about. We're, we're going to be reviewing pointers and dynamically allocating memory here a bit. So um, we could create like a pointer called first um, uh, to a node type. Now remember, this doesn't actually allocate any memory. First just holds a memory address, but we haven't actually pointed first to anything yet, okay? Um, oh, uh, before I do that, um, um, let me remember something here. Um, um, we're going to be constructing this linked list by hand, okay? So we're going to have four nodes in our linked list. So, so the first part of this video today, we, we, we construct this linked list by hand with four nodes. The first part is the information, so each one has a, an integer or a value. So 17, 92, 63, 45. And then this others represent the, the pointer. 
Okay, so, so you know each one of these was allocated in memory at different places. So this one was supposedly allocated at memory, uh, at, starting at memory address 2000, and then this node at 2800, and so on. So this is supposed to indicate that the pointer, like this link, member um, item pointer, holds memory address 2800, which means that it's pointing to the second node in the list here. All right. Um, so yeah, so so back to this. Um, so we, we, we can create those, those node types by hand using dynamic memory allocation, right? So um, um, we, we created a, a pointer first here, but we didn't actually allocate anything. So here remembers how you allocate. So, so I can allocate um, uh, memory to hold one of, those new node, one of those new node types. So this is enough memory to hold a pointer, uh, the, the link pointer, and to hold one integer, the, I, the info, the, the information field, okay? Uh, and remember, when you do new, it returns a pointer. So we're actually assigning the memory address. Um, so let's, let's build that and run here. So I actually just print out the memory address of, of the, that, was, that got allocated, that, that got assigned in the first tier when we did this new. Um, so we should be building, and we'll run here. So you can see that's, that's a hexadecimal address, but that is 0045D430. That's the memory address that was allocated when we did new node, and that's now what first is pointing to. So the actual value that's in first is, is that, 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 that hexadecimal number right there, okay? So yeah, I'm back to that uh, figure. I mean, that is basically, you know, like these addresses here, right? These are all supposed to be memory addresses, all right? Um, so, uh, so, so first points to a, a node type. So that means that um, it has uh, the member fields info and link. So we can fill those in. So we can we can uh, assign those values um, like this. Um, so, so, so we assign seventeen into info and uh, null into link, right? Um, so, so again, if I go back to, you know, so, so basically I'm constructing this first one. I, I, instead of calling it head, I called it first here to be consistent with uh, our books uh, when, when we start creating linked list types. But first basically has the mem that memory address that we saw, and, and enough memory was allocated for a node type, and we, we put 17 into the first one, and we actually didn't um, allocate this yet, okay? So let me talk a little bit about what we, what we did there. Um, so um, we, we allocated null in here. So the null uh, really comes out to, it's just a zero, but it, it's used to mean a special thing, especially when you're working with things like linked lists, okay? So a null pointer means that uh, this isn't a valid memory reference, okay? So we use that when we're iterating through linked lists to see when we've come to the end of the, of the list. So this is kind of like a flag that instead of holding a valid memory address, um, if it holds zero or holds a null, null pointer, um, that's, that, that's an indication that it's not really pointing to anything yet, okay? So we can allocate another new node type, and I called this one last this time, so I had a node pointer. And, and instead of doing it in two steps, so i first declaring the pointer variable and then doing new, you can do that all in one step, of course. So uh, we, we have a pointer variable to, to node type called last, uh, and we out and at the same time we allocate some new memory, right? And then we um, assign it values 45, and we also point it the point its link, so it's not pointing to anything. So we indicate that it's not pointing to anything yet. So um, there we go. So um, that has the effect of um, uh, that was this node here. So I didn't show it, but um, 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 so I should probably change the, the names of these, these things here. I've got to erase this from before. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, really, um, in the example I'm, I'm doing right now, I'm calling this, uh, first, and I'm calling this over here last. So, so we had variables called first and last. First, then we set up to point to, uh, a new dynamically allocated node. Uh, and then last, we just, when we actually, um, when we actually declared the variable, uh, 
Okay, um, sorry, I had to pause there for a second. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we have we have a, a ver point of variable LAS, and and uh, when we declared it, we actually also allocated memory, so let's point to that, and we assigned it 50. And um, uh, actually, both of these, uh, so this isn't accurate at the moment here uh, either. So um, at the moment, um, you know, we're actually pointing to zero. Uh, so, so this is a null pointer and this is null. So every one of these that we create, we're just going to, uh, we're, not, we're not linking the list up yet. We're just pointing um, all of these to null. So that's often used as a symbol to null, just a pointer, uh, an arrow pointing down. Um, so um, anyway, so we can create a second node and a third node. Um, so I'll step over those. So the second node holds a value 92. It's not pointing to anything yet. And the third node uh, holds a value 63, and it's not pointing to anything yet. Okay. So, um, so, so yeah, if I add in here, so, so we actually had two more pointer variables, one called node 2, uh, one called node 3, um, and, um, you know, this one is pointing to the one holding the value 92, this one's pointing to the one holding the value 93. So, so again, think of the, I mean, l like it showed here, this, this is kind of a uh, figure from our textbook, think of these as the memory address. So really, first is holding that memory address, that, that hexadecimal value that I showed you here, and the same for all of these, you know, so, so if, if this was actually allocated memory at 2800, that would be the number that was in the variable node 2, likewise for node 3 and node 4, okay? And, and yeah, these are all pointing to null. I won't, I won't cross those out, but but uh, everything though is is not linked up yet. All right. So um, so so linking up these is as simple then as setting the pointer. So the link um, in our node type, uh, recall, is the the pointer. Okay, so that's just a pointer to a node type. But, but again, pointers are memory address. So all we have to do to link these up is put the right memory address, put the right uh, pointer value uh, in each one of these. All right. So, um, my place again. So, so yeah, if I set f first link to be equal to node 2, that this has the memory address of pointing to node 2, so I'll just copy the memory address in there, and then the, the link in first will then be pointing to node 2, um, and, and so on. The, the link in node 2 will be pointing to, to node 3, the link in node 3 will be pointing to the, uh, the, the one that, la that, that last is, is pointed to, our, our last node then, okay? So at this point, uh, oh, and, and, you know, I, I did, I did it just to, just, just to emphasize this, but uh, uh, since last is going to be our last node in our linked list, uh, you know, we need to make certain that that has a null value, or that will break, uh, you know, your, your linked list implementations will break uh, if you don't correctly remember set that your last item always indicates it's the last one by having its link pointing to null into the null pointer. Um, all right, so uh, at this point, then, um, um, I, we, we actually created all these nodes. So, so we create all these links now. So we've actually got our link list, and it looks like this. Um, uh, we've got first point to that. First links, first link points to node 2, uh, and then the node 2's link points to node 3, and so on. And the last's link uh, is a null pointer, so it doesn't point to anything valid. Um, all right, so, I mean, you know, we can use those, and typically, um, um, as I had it in this diagram, or as we just did in the code, uh, you don't, normally you don't keep pointers into the middle except when you're uh, processing elements in your linked list. So, I mean, I normally wouldn't have node 2 or node 3. I would only have, like, my first pointer or my head pointer. Um, and, and as we'll see, normally for a linked list, you keep one pointer to the first item, and one pointer to the last item, and those are the only two that you keep track of your of your list of your linked list. Everything else that's in the middle, you have to start at your first one and then kind of follow the links until you find the item that you need. You know, if you're doing a search or something on, on your linked list. So what I mean by that, so if, if uh, just imagine we don't have the node two or the node th node three. So, but if I had my head my first node, um, I could I could certainly access my um, uh, value in my first node, my head node. Just so, just follow the uh, dereference the pointer and get the info member field. So that should print out the value in, in the first one there, um, which was what 17. I'd forgotten, but yeah, 17. 
Um, but, you know, uh, so notice, I mean, you can chain these. So, so j just from first, I can follow the link. That gives me to node 2. And then from there, if I dereference that one, that link is a pointer as well. So if I dereference that to its info, this should be the value in the second node, what I, what I call node 2 in my um, link list that we're creating by hand. So uh, that had the value 92. Um, and then if you do that twice, so if, if you go from first, follow its link, follow its link, um, uh, oh, third one, yeah, just twice. So first one would be the, the value, and in, in, if I dereferenced it to info, would be the value, the info in my first one. And if I do one link, that's going to be the, the info in my second node, and then two is going to be the info in my third node, if I dereference after following two links and, and get info, okay? So that was 63, um, and then I can get my fourth one, just adding one more onto this whole chain. So dereference, 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 and then get the, the info value. Okay. Um, so yeah, the last one was 45. Okay. Um, so uh, kind of uh, I had a warning here. So so let me just show this. Um, so you should never uh, dereference a null pointer. So that causes your program crash. This is a common thing if, when people start working with pointers. So new programmers, when they start working with pro, pro, uh, pointers and dynamic memory, uh, if you try to dereference uh, a memory address that's invalid or a memory address that's pointing to null, that's pointing to zero, okay? So here, uh, I only had four items in my list so far. So the most I can go is follow three links to get to the fourth item. So if I follow, try to follow four links and dereference that, the, your, the pro, your program would actually cr crash. So if I um, um, uncomment that and then uh, run it down to that point, you'll get, um, uh, oh, I had a breakpoint here, so let's continue there. So, so yeah, you, you'll get, uh, um, uh, an exception or um, <clears throat> um, but, but yeah basically some some kind of message about a null pointer or an invalid memory reference or something like that so um, all right so yeah so you, so it's a, a very common problem you have to be careful with the uh, when you're dereferencing stuff to make certain they got something valid that you don't have a null pointer or something like that so um, all right, so let's rebuild here. Let me remove this breakpoint. So we're down to here now. Um, okay, so yeah, but uh, this kind of chain of stuff, uh, I mean, except in, for examples or maybe uh, questions on quizzes or things, but you normally don't see code that, that looks like that. Uh, that would be pretty ugly. I mean, the normal thing that you have to do uh, when you want to process a list is you have to iterate through the list, okay? So you have to start at the first node, um, and then use a loop to, 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 to go one by one through the nodes to do something like search them or print out the values or something like that. So this is, um, this is, this is the basic pattern. This is the, the of, of how you process the elements in a linked list, all right? So, um, um, so I mean, you normally use like a, you'll need like a temporary pointer variable, um, and a common name, or a textbook uses current a lot for this variable when you're iterating through the node, so when you're traversing your list, basically. Um, and you start off with uh, current pointing to first, okay? So, so you just initialize it, so current is the same um, as, as your first item. So, so yeah, the, the, that's where this came from. So now current initially points um, uh, the, to the same bit of memory that first points to. Because again, we're just you know assigning memory addresses from one to the other, so now they're point they're both referencing or pointing to the same thing. Um, so if if you dereference current, then since it's pointing to first, you'll get the the val the, the first value in uh, the linked list. So um, let's see here. So yeah, or 17, right? So that was the, the, the item, the first item, the, the item in the first node of our linked list is, is uh, 17, right? Um, 
so then if you if you turn on this lip so notice then at the bottom what you need to do is you need to set current so that it uh, now points to whatever uh, the, the link is pointing to okay so so this is how you move it on to the next item in your link list okay current equals current which points, which points to link so that has the effect of taking this memory address and plopping it into here so it has the effect of of, of, oops, of, uh, of erasing this that's not what I wanted but uh, anyway that, that'll work at erasing this so now that tw if, if the memory address of our second node is 2800 it'll be as if we have 2800 in here which means current is now pointing here right so, so current is pointing there after we execute after I step o over this uh, this statement here so do two steps so now if we looked at the memory address for current so I, I can see down here in my debugger I mean that's the memory address of my second node was this 13c um, um, uh, f48 Okay. All right, and then continuing on, so so we'll go back on to the top of the loop. Current is not yet null; it has a, a non-zero value, a non-null value. So so now we'll end up displaying the second item, which was 92 in the list there. All right. So then we increment again, um, and we point current to the next one by by copying the link from currents uh, to become our new current. All right. So so now um, we've gotten rid of this. Um, and, and so current was pointing here, so we're going to be copying this over to here, which means that we're now pointing to our third node at this point, and so on. I won't keep coming back here, showing redrawing current's links, but but uh, but but yeah, we're now pointing to our third one, so that should be a different memory address if you look at your value that's in current here, um, and we should display our third value, which was 63. <coughs> um, so now, um, and we'll point now to our fourth item. So this should assign a new value into current. So this should be the, the address of our fourth item. And when we come back into our loop, we'll display item four. Now something happens different here. So now, because the link in the fourth item is pointing to null, and current is now pointing uh, here to the last item, So when we, we assign the link into current, we're, we're, we're signing null into current, okay? So, so now if we step here and if we look in our debugger, um, and you see the, the value of, of, of current is null or zero, okay? And then that's how you normally break out of the loop. So that's an indication you've, you've iterated all the way through to the end of your, uh, your list. There's, there's nothing, there's no more nodes after the one we just processed. So, so now when we come back up, we'll hit our condition here, um, and we'll be out of the loop, okay? Um, so another example here. So uh, here's a function that, that iterates through the linked list. So if we pass in um, our first no our, our, the pointer to the first node to, our, to a function, we can use that then to iterate through the list the same way we just did here in this loop in main here. So let me step into that. Uh, so two string is, is an example of you know methods that I've shown you before where we're going to construct a string. Uh, we want to construct a string on the linked list that's pointed to by the the node that we pass in here. Okay, so I just called that current. So so current has whatever node you pass in, and it's going to follow the the links from current till it gets to the end of the list at this point. Okay, so um, we we can. We construct an output string stream, um, and we we output the first info value that's in current, assuming that our link that our list you know that we didn't pass in null, that indicating the list was probably empty. Um, but then we have a loop like like we had before. So th this one processes the second through the through the second third through the last item of the list inside of the loop. But it's it's the same kind of format. So, or well, I mean the only thing that happens is. Uh, we, we do something with current, with the info that, that we're currently pointing to. In this case, we output it to our string that we're building. And then we uh, um, advance this pointer so it's pointing to the next item in the linked list. All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's not step through all that. Let's go to that and um, return out. 
So, so yeah, we can just get the string. Should have the same four items if the string was constructed correctly. 1792, 6345, like that. Um, All right, and then finally, you know, just to emphasize, always be good, you know, when you start working with dynamically allocated memory in a language like C or C++, um, um, you know, so again, it's, it's powerful, um, so, uh, you know, you have to be careful. Um, so <clears throat> so if, if we're not going to use that memory anymore, and, and I'm not going to create a new list after this point, uh, we should free up everything that we did. Um, so you do have to be careful here. So if I just deleted first, I would actually lose my pointer the, 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 because first points to the second item in the list. I, I could use, of course, uh, my variable that's called node 2 that's still pointing to the second item. But if I didn't have node 2 and node 3, if I only had first and last, uh, yeah, you wouldn't be able to delete your list like this. You have to be a little bit more careful. So I'll show that in a second here. But by here, I mean, this will delete the, the fourth node, um, uh, here, and then this will delete the third node, and so we're kind of working backwards uh, in this case, doing it by hand. Delete the second node, this deletes the first node then, uh, and then at the at the end, so a normal way when we're working with linked lists that we indicate that a list is empty is we set both first and last to be null. So if they're both pointing to null, that means there's no node in the list, and the list is empty right now. So when we create a, a linked list abstract data type, uh, if it initially starts off empty, we will indicate that by having the, the first and last, or the head and the tail, whatever we call those pointers, both pointing to null. All right. Um, okay. So um, so now we're going to look at um, yeah. So now we're going to look at some different ways of building a list. Actually, we're going to be begin we're, we're beginning to look at uh, inserting items into a list. So so I'm first going to talk about inserting things at to, onto the tail of a list. Okay. So it, it's it, if you keep track of the last item or the tail item, inserting items at the end of the list um, is a you know conceptually just an order one operation. It's a constant time operation. Uh, thinking back to algorithmic complexity. Same for inserting item at the head of a list. So for a singly linked list, if you have a pointer to your first item, it's, it's order one, it's constant time to add a new item to the list, as opposed to like an array-based implementation, especially adding an item to the, the, the beginning of your array, you'd first have to shift everything down. So in that case, it's a O-N. So whatever the si size of your list is currently uh, in, if you have N items in it, you have to shift all those items. So you have N assignments, in shifting before you can uh, insert your new item. But it's, it's constant time for a list uh, to, to insert at the beginning or the end or in the middle of the list as well. So, so um, here um, we're going to be building a loop, uh, building a list using a loop. Um, so initially our list is completely empty now. Um, I define a new variable that we're going to use to keep track of new nodes as we create them and then link them into the list, okay? Um, and in this case, we're going to be using, uh, in this uh, example um, um, for the video this week, uh, we use user input. So I ask, the, I ask myself to type in an integer, and, and we're going to put those into the list, okay? So, so in this list, uh, in, in, or in this loop, initially our list is empty. Um, we, we get an integer that we want to... Uh, insert at the end of our list, okay? Uh, we use negative one as a flag to stop, uh, you know, getting new items and, and appending them into the list. So the basic thing for inserting items at the end or the beginning of the list is you first create a new node, so we dynamically allocate a new node, and we put that item in that we want to insert into our list as the info for our node. Um, and we set our link to null because if we're inserting on the end, I mean, that's definitely important. We, we, we want the, this new node is going to be put onto the end of our linked list. So uh, since it's going to be the last um, item, um, it should be pointing to null to indicate it's, it's, it's at the end of the list once we get it um, um, inserted on the end there. So th this is typical when we're doing like insertion. So you usually have a little bit of a, a special case for when the, the list, is, list is initially empty. So when the list is initially empty, both first and last has to point to the new node, okay? Because when it's empty, we're now adding one new node, and now both first and, that, that one node is both the first and the last node 
uh, in the lists after you add it. So, so that that's simple. So for an empty list, the correct thing to do is have first and last both point to that new node, and of course make certain that the new node you created, um, its link is pointing to null, indicating it's the it's at the end of the list. Okay. Um, so if the list is not empty, we want to just append it to the end. So we have to do something like this. Um, so um, let me let me illustrate what we're going to do here. So I mean, what we do is we set last link to be node. So let's say I entered in ten um, as um, my node. Now let's say we already had these values in our link list. Okay. So um, I get rid of all this here. So, you know, if I entered in 10, we would have created a new node um, and I would have had the value of 10 in it and um, we, we set its pointer to be pointing to null, so it's not pointing anywhere, okay? So what we need to do is we need to have lasts, and, and remember last is pointing to the last node in here pointing right here, okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to set last link to point to the new node. So, so we want to go from here to pointing to our new node. So that's all we do here. Last link points to the new node. Um, and then, you know, we just need to update our last pointer. So, so now that we've appended uh, that node onto the end here, this is no longer the last node in um, our list. Um, this one is over here. So voila, now we have a new link list. In this case, we had four items. We appended a new one on the end. And now we have our fifth item. All right. So yeah, that's all we're doing in this list. Uh, and you know, every time you know you, you type in a value, we create a new node, um, and it gets appended. And so the, the the list grows from the end uh, with this code here. So let me break here and just run that down to there. So. Um, yeah, and at the end, we'll, we'll use two string to print out um, our contents here. So let me add like three, five, seven, and nine. So we would uh, we would expect three to be the first, uh, the, the, the the item in the first node, uh, and then five at the second node because we're appending them on the end. Seven at the third node, and nine at our last node in in our list here. So I had a breakpoint here. Sorry, um, inside of two string. So there it is. So, so three. So, so the first one that's printed out was the first node, the one that's pointed to by first, and then our second node, third node, and then this is the node pointed to like by last. So the last one I entered was, was inserted on the end of the node, and last is pointed to there. Okay. Um, okay. So. Um, um, before I show inserting or uh, it, to the front of the, the list, um, um, like I mentioned, um, I'll show an example of, of deleting those. So let's say I want to just get rid of that list that we created that had three, five, seven, and nine. I want to destroy all those nodes. So again, um, um, now remember we don't we don't have pointers backwards, so we can't start at last delete it, and then go to this one. So that you need a doubly linked list for that. So in a doubly linked list, we have um, um, so I'll, I might talk about this in another video, but in a doubly linked list, we have two links. We have we have a link. Uh, we usually call them like prev and next. Okay, so so we might have one link called next, which would point like this way uh, from from the front to the back, and we would have one link called prev that would point from each node back to the previous one. That, that's a doubly linked list. Okay. So if you do that, you could start at the, the last one um, and go backward, but, but we don't have that for a singly linked list. So, so we do have to, if, if we want to delete all these, we do have to start at the, the front the, of, of our list. Delete it and go through, but we have to be careful. So, you know, before we delete this, we have to make certain that we keep this pointer to our second node. Um, um, and then we can safely delete this and continue on, right? So that's all we're doing um, in this loop here. So um, so I created another variable. I could have just reused. Well, I didn't really get one to reuse. Again, use meaningful names. So um, uh, we create, <coughs> we start off with current pointing to first. Um, so, so we start at, at the first node in our list. 
we point node to that same one because that's the node that we want to delete. So node and current are the same at this point, but then we increment current. So now current is pointing to the, the next item in the list. So um, at, at this point in our code, um, after, after I execute that statement, um, I'll just step through over those. Um, what we've done, so, so I've got a different list. I've got three, five, seven, and nine, but I do have four items uh, in here. So what we did, we, we, we had current, um, and we, we created, um, a, you know, which was initially pointing to head node, and we created another node called, uh, or another link, a pointer, called node to delete. And we pointed both, we, we pointed this initially to the same thing that current was pointing to, then, uh, before we delete this, we increment current. So, um, uh, by in it, we follow current's link to the next one, which has the effect of pointing it here. So it's pointing to the second node. Now we can safely send a delete command, you know, so ask delete uh, node to delete here. All right. So voila, that's what we do at the last thing, okay? And then we keep doing that because now when we get to the top, I mean, current is pointing to node two now at this point. So I can safely, the next time through the loop, uh, then point node to delete to current, increment current, so it's pointing to the third node, and so on, all right? And then set first equals last to null, okay? But yeah, so, so you know, sometimes you do have to be careful because you want to do something to the, the node, so if you can only iterate through your linked list in one direction. You might have to save that in like a temporary variable so you can increment a different pointer variable and then do something with that temporary variable, you know, like delete in this case. All right. um, so unless I had a bug in there, that should successfully uh, free up all of the, the, the nodes that we had for the list we just constructed with 3579. Um, so now we're going to look at an example of um, of, of inserting uh, to the front of the list or prepending to the beginning of the list, okay? So, so it's, it's, it's really not much different. Um, so, you know, we ask the user and we, we dynamically create a new node. If the, if the list is empty, we still do the same thing as we did before. So we're going from, from zero nodes to one node in the list. So both first and last would point to that new node um, that we just created. Um, and, and being careful that we set the, the, the node's link to be null. So that since it's the end node on our one node list, um, it's null. But the only thing that's different then is the else part here in this loop. So to, to, point so, to uh, add something to the beginning of the list, um, um, so, so we dynamically create like a new node um, with some value, so I might have had a value, whatever I type in, 42 is my new value I'm trying to insert here to the head of the node. So what we want to do is we want to set uh, our first, so it's called first in our code right now. First is pointing to this node. Um, so we want to set first to here, but again, you have to be careful. I mean, if you just, if you do this, redirect this leg first, you've lost uh, your your pointer to this. So before we do that, that I just um, 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 showed, we, we first need to set a, a, a temporary variable to, to be pointing to the what's going to become our second node in the linked list. So, um, oh, um, um, I'm sorry. So, so the first thing that we do, the first thing you can do, um, yeah, so initially when we created our new node, it was pointing to null, right? So the, fir the, the, fir the best first thing to do is to then just, we have first, so we can uh, point this one to the same thing that first is pointing to by assigning this memory address to our link here for the new node we're creating. Now we have that. Now, um, yeah, that's right. So now, you know, now we do have our link that we need to what's going to become our second node here. So we can safely just uh, get rid of that and point to there. So we're good. So yeah, that, that's the better way to do it. So first point our new node to the head and then change this so now our new node becomes the new head item, uh, the new first item in our linked list here. So yeah, that's all that's happening on these two statements, right? So, um, uh, 
Let me break, break after we're done here. So if we run that, I can create another list. Oh, so here, if I do the same numbers, 3, 5, 7, and 9, so no, we, we should expect the list to be in reverse order, right? So 3 got inserted, but 5 is going to be inserted on the front. So once I do that, 5 will be the first node and 3 is the second node. Then we insert 7, so now 7 is the first node, followed by 5, 3. And then at the end, 9 should be the first node, so it should be 9, 7, 5, 3. Right? So notice the difference, right? So that's the difference from inserting on the front versus inserting on the back, okay? And uh, again, kind of as a hint or looking ahead here, I mean, this is the difference between a stack and a queue here. When we talk about stack and queue data structures next, so stacks, or so queues, we always just put uh, items onto the end of our queue. So whatever came first is going to stay at the head of the queue. Stacks, we always push things to the front. So the, the, the last thing that we pushed is going to be at the front of our stack, or the top of our stack, if you think of stacks as going from top to bottom. And the first thing that we, that we put on there is going to be at the bottom or the end there. So. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, we'll talk about stacks and queues in later, uh, next, uh, in a couple weeks here. Okay, uh, and then finally, um, so we showed inserting at the beginning and inserting at the end in order to create a list. Um, let's use that list. So, so we've got now I've got this list that has 9753. I'm just going to reuse it. We're going to insert an item in the middle um, of the list here. So about the same, slightly different. Um, so, but I'm not going to do a loop this time, just show you the, the particular operation. So the, 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 whenever you insert things, so the, you have to start off by um, 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 determining where you want to insert it at. So normally what you do is you usually start by doing like a search to, to determine the location in the linked list where you want to insert the item. And the, the result from that would be the, a pointer to the node in the list before the location where you want to insert uh, the new node, okay? Um, so let's say that we just want to insert it um, after the second node, okay? So I want to create a new node that has the value 42, and I want it to insert it after 7. So my new list should be 9742.53. All right, so that's what we're doing here. So um, I've got a pointer variable called insert after this node that by hand, again, I just directly pointed it to, by doing this, I'm pointing it to the second node, the one that holds the value 7. All right. Um, and, but, and, and now I'm going to create a new node. Um, so, so we create a new node. We, we gave it the value 42, and we're going to insert that after the, the second node in this case. All right. So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, my, my list right now has three, five, or it has nine, seven, five, three. I won't change those. But, but basically, we're trying to insert our node that we're creating uh, in between the second and the third one here between uh, 7 and 5, right? So uh, I've got the node, the, the, the new node. We're going we're to create it with the value 42. Um, so again, so, so I've, and I've got the, that, that um, pointer now to the um, called something like insert Uh, insert node, what did I call it? Uh, insert after this node, right? So insert after this node. If I did my, my um, arithmetic right, it, it's like I said, it's pointing to the second one. We want to insert it after the second one, the one that holds seven in there, okay? Um, so like we did before, the, the, the best thing to do is to first start off by, so, so we've got insert after node and we know what its link is. So that gives us the memory address of the place where this new node should be pointing. So we want to insert, uh, so, so we've got a variable called uh, new node, which is pointing to this new node that we just created, okay? Um, so we want to set new node's link to be equal to insert after this node's link. So just by assigning those, so if we assign this memory address 1500 in this figure to here, that has the effect of pointing new node to the third node, the one that holds the value uh, 5. Okay. Um, oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, I mean, even I find it useful uh, if I'm working with linked lists to draw diagrams like this. 
if I, if I get stuck or, or have a bit of a problem. So, so it's very useful to, to draw out when you're trying to do an operation, okay? So, so the, that's our first step in the algorithm for inserting. And then after that, all we have to do is insert, uh, out, um, assign new node's address. So new node is, is pointing to the address of our new node. So we want our link now to be this address, whatever it is, instead of pointing to 1500, which points to the old third node. So if, after we do that assignment, it would have the effect of getting rid of that and pointing there. And then voila, we have this node inserted in the third position between the second and the old third item in the link list. So those the, uh, um, right here are the two steps that I just talked about. Um, so after we create the new node, um, sorry, after we create the new node and put the item into it, the new node's link we uh, set to uh, node three, basically the the node that the second node is pointing to. So that just copies the memory address of the third node uh, to be what new node is pointing to in its link. And then our second step is uh, this, uh, the second node, the one that we're referencing as insert after this node variable, we point it now to be pointing to the new node. So after we do that, if we display, we should see that we have 9, 7, and we inserted 42 in between the 7 and the 5 there. And again, this is a constant operation, or well, uh, of course, to, to search for the location where you want it might be non-constant. So, so to get this pointer to the location where you want to do the insertion um, um, might take some work. So, so it's maybe it's a little bit wrong to say that if, uh, inserting onto the beginning and the end of a linked list is always going to be a constant time operation. So inserting in the middle, you, you might you know first have to search or something depending on on what you're doing. But uh, but yeah. Um, all right. Oh, and, and uh, the, the same way that you're inserting items, we can also chop off items or delete items from the beginning or the end or the middle. So this is just some examples of doing that. So if I want to chop off the, <coughs> the item from the front of the list, all I have to do is uh, <coughs> reassign first to be, you know, kind of just like we were doing in those loops, to, to increment uh, to, to advance to the next node in the list. So first equals what, what first link is pointing to. That advances first. But if I want to be a good memory manager, again, uh, I need to keep track of the old first so I can delete it, okay? Uh, so I can't do this first or else uh, I can't do this uh, advance to the next item in the list before I delete, um, um, before I delete the, 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 the first because I, I've lost my pointer in a singly linked list to my to my old first item, so so you 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 first keep track of the old first item, then you can advance, and then you can safely delete that that old first one. So after you, after you do that, yeah, if you look at your list here, um, uh, that has the the effect of chopping off the head, the nine or, or the first item. We have these four remaining. Um, you do the same thing thing on the tail. Um, so, oh, um, except, um, yeah, except the, the tail is more complicated because, uh, again, if you need to do memory management, if you're only keeping um, a pointer to the last node in the linked list, uh, you really need to point that then to the one before that, the, the one that's second to last in the linked list, but you don't have a pointer directly to that. Um, so... Um, um, and, and there's for a singly linked list, there's no way around it. So the, um, I, and now that I'm thinking about it, I, I need to change my comments here because it's not right. So, so even you might think, well, I can add another pointer to, to have to, to keep track of the last and the next to last, but that doesn't work. So if you, if you chop off the last, I still have to then go back and search from the beginning to find the, the next to last uh, thing because I don't have pointers going back in the other direction. So the only way to do this kind of efficiently is... Um, is um yeah I have a doubly linked list all right so uh, anyway it, but, but yeah if, if if we if we can find the pointer to the, the 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 second to the last item we can just chop off that last item that, that's all I'm doing in this example code here um, uh, so I won't go through that in detail but but I'll just show I mean you know so you can do that so we can chop off the three 
uh, but I will show a little bit more than, than removing an item from the middle. So let's try and re remove the second, the, what's now the second item, the 42 from there, okay? So, um, so it, it's not too much more complicated. So um, um, if we have an item, a pointer to the item before the item that we want to remove, that, that's all we need. And again, though, we might have to search for that to, to find the location before the item that we want to delete, all right? Um, so I create, in this example, I create two temporary variables. The, the node before points to um, um, the node before the one we want to delete. So I point it to the head or the first item. So it's pointing to seven. Uh, and then uh, I keep track of the actual node I want to delete because I need to, to, to keep track of that so I can actually send the delete command to that. So, um, so this is going to be pointed by, because we follow its length, this is going to be pointing to 42. The, the actual item we want to delete, the actual node we want to delete here. So then we can safely now um, um, change this link to skip over this. So, so now that we have the, the pointer pointing to the node we want to delete, we just assign its pointer to the, the, the node before pointer, which is what we're, which is what's happening here. It's, it's link. The node to delete's link becomes the node before's link causing us to, to skip over the node we want to delete. And then now we can safely delete our node, okay? Um, so let's just show that happen there. All right. Um, so that's um, um, basically up there. So I think we covered all these. So we talked uh, in this video, we talked a little bit about um, implement, implementing a list as array base versus a linked list base. So you should understand that kind of the performance considerations are, are you know, why um, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to implementing lists of, of items that way. Uh, but then we talked about the basics, um, you know, so, so um, again, maybe now you see that uh, you, need, you need to have a pretty good handle on using pointers and dynamic memory allocation to be comfortable uh, working with linked lists, okay? Because you need to do a lot of stuff with them. So, but we looked at examples of building, you know, inserting items at the front and the back of lists um, and deleting items from the front and the back and things like that, okay? So those are the basic operations you need in order to be able to work with linked lists. Um, all right, so that's uh, kind of it for this video. Um, and I hope that was useful, and I will uh, see you guys in the next video.